Hello and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire and today I would like to share with you more the information I've received from 25th Dimension during my last BQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript and when I refer from Lorraine, I'm speaking of my practitioner who will be reading me questions I prepared in advance of the session unless otherwise noted. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking of myself under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from the 25th dimension. But before I move forward, I'd like to thank you as always for subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. All right, let's jump in. Lorraine, Claire would like to know what the themes are for the United States, Italy, and Australia. And just to give you a background on this question, every country has a theme that generally essences want to experience if they are in that country. It does not mean everybody's the same. It does not mean that each and every essence wants to experience that. It might be a country that you just move through or that you move away from. So it's really it's just part of something that you want to experience. So countries are just like essences. They also are learning something at a collective level. All right, so here's the answer from the 25th. So, one of the major themes for the United States has been this idea that so many bad things, you know, we have removed and exploited natives and then there has been slavery. And meanwhile, we do believe in this idea that we are free here and that we are special, we are different. This is a theme for the United States. Now, it is absolutely a place where if you come with this idea, because again, everything is an idea here, right? In the sense, you come with this idea that this is a free place. This is where you get as a 3D person to experience whatever amount of freedom you want to experience. You wouldn't have this opportunity in the Middle East, for example, or in some African countries, or even some Asian countries, et cetera, et cetera. You might even be in a European country, completely open, but you're born to a family that might be very strict. So we know this, that it's whatever you set up as your own individual reality. Doesn't really matter where you are. But in general, in this country, if you hold the idea that you want to be free, you can. You can reflect that in your reality, or you can even see it around you, even though we've seen how manipulated everything is. I mean, no less than many other places. But this has always been the idea, and it's been, again, the contrast between what has actually happened, and we'll use quotes here, in real life, in real history, what has actually happened, and of course history is not exactly like we're told, but generally speaking, some of the things we are told have happened, and I mean, they're happening to this day, that we're exploiting, for example, Native Americans, or treating them a certain way, or we're even treating African Americans a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. And despite that, we still like to think of ourselves as so open-minded and all of that. This is a lesson, right? If you detach yourself from how painful this is in 3D, you realize this theme is very fascinating. Again, it just shows you how much we can lie to ourselves. And also at the same time, it shows you how powerful we truly are. That we're like, despite all of this, we can. We are setting up our own reality. It's very obvious here because you do have the opportunity to set it up for yourself. I mean, look at what you're doing right now with a new government, Lorraine. Where else would you get this opportunity to set up a new government? Not in Italy, for sure. And Italy is supposed to be just as democratic, which, of course, the word democracy is a joke, but just as democratic as the United States. So that's one. For Italy, the theme has always been, Italy has always been very much under the thumb of the shadow of the Catholic, uh, the Catholic Church. And the theme has always been this individualistic streak to people. But really, there's such a force of darkness above you that's infiltrated everything. So the theme for Italy really is a matter of emancipation. Italy was always meant to emancipate. But every time it's tried to do that, there has been basically this dark, the dark has struck back with the world wars. And we're just saying Italy, it's been the case in other European countries as well, but with the world wars, fascism, et cetera, et cetera. This is why the dark strikes so hard in Italy. We've seen it now with the pandemic. Italy has become a prison and this is why, because the dark has always been much more concentrated there. 
it was almost like the spring of the dark in most of the world. In that sense, it came from Italy. Not because Italians are particularly evil, but just because of what we can call historical reasons there, the way that it was set up. Just like there are other countries where the dark has bases, you know, physical bases like Israel, like the UK, et cetera, et cetera, like in the United States as well too. Which is funny again, because in the US somehow because of this different theme, we're able to believe actually this country is okay which really is not okay. But again, it's a different story. It's a different theme. As for, as for Australia, and I'm only asking guys about these three countries because I'm from Italy, I live in the US, and a lot of people on the channel are in Australia. So it's not that these three countries were any more evil or any more important or any more anything than any other country. So if you're interested in a different country, do let me know in the comments and I will ask about that next time. All right, so let's continue reading here. As for Australia, we already discussed this. They've had a lot of history with not only the Aboriginals, where they've done very similar things to what's happened in the United States, you know, different shades of dark, but also the fact that a lot of them, a lot of Australians still carry the stigma of having been like a prison, a prison continent where people went to expi expiate sins. You know, from an essence perspective, when you become enamored with an idea because that seems to be a fun thing for you or because you get stuck in it because all your friends want to live that, it does affect you. It will affect your 3D life. We know this. Everything comes from the higher self. What the higher self is interested in is experiencing. So what's happening in Australia is that a lot of them felt bad about their roots, felt bad about what's happened. And I mean, there's been a lot of dark history pretty much everywhere on the planet. So we're not, we're asking about Australia because a lot of people on the channel are from Australia, not because Australia is any worse than any other place. But what they've done, they have cleared themselves now. And so now they're able to individuate, do individuation work where they can become aware of who they are individually as an essence. They're basically more conscious of their connection with accents now, again, everybody who's left is of the light, but you notice how many people in our group, for example, are from Australia. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that's happening? Because Australians have done a lot of work and a lot of them do want to know now. A lot of them have wanted to know because they knew what was gonna happen. They knew they were gonna go through this. So of course, the knowledge at a 3D level has also been comforting to them to understand what's going on. But yes, that's the theme. That's been the theme for Australia, but they're done. They've been pretty much clear. They've pretty much clear most of it. The Italians will also be done, but it's taking them, it would have taken them longer because again, they have major institutional, not only they have the government just as corrupt as everywhere else, but they also have the church and the church has been even physically a very oppressive power. Lorraine. Of course, the United States has never been a democracy. It's a republic, a big difference, but most people don't grasp that. Me, well, the United States was supposed to be a republic, just like Italy is supposed to be a republic. However, the concept of democracy was overlaid to where people were proposally confused as to what it means. Democracy is being talked about. Nobody talks about the republic. Everybody talks about democracy, and there is a reason for that. The dark actually introduced this concept because he knew it would appeal to people. It would make them feel like they had a say. And of course, we understand democracy is a sham. Democracy is basically tyranny. It's just tyranny by a few more people. And they were laughing. Or you think that you hold the reins. You're the tyrant. You got to make the laws. Of course, that's not true. We've seen it now that you don't even get to really vote. Your vote makes absolutely no difference. And even if you made a difference, that people are being pre-selected for you. I mean, there is no freedom that comes from the political system. And I think many, many people are seeing that, have seen that more and more in recent years. Lorraine, thank you. So Josie Adams has a question. What is the story behind the Gregorian versus the Julian calendars? Claire has a little tag in here, <coughs> excuse me. Given that time is not real, is one preferable to the other in which team started these calendars. In the past, we used to track time by the moon, but that still does not make time real. 
So why was the system changed? Me. Yeah, so there's really no difference between the Julian and Gregorian in the sense of they're all an idea. So like you said in the question, time is not real. So everything we play around time, everything we do around time is a game. It's clearly a game, meaning it's not even based on anything substantial. We already know, for example, even in the calendar we use right now, it's all made up. We decided we're going to split everything into 365 days a year. No real reason. In fact, it doesn't even work out. So you have leap years and whatnot. We're always adjusting because it doesn't really work. Some months are X amount of days. Some other months have different amount of days. It's all fun and games, right? All we're looking for is a standard where if I speak with you, Lorraine, and want to do something together, like the session today, we have some kind of reference point in 3D where we're like, all right, at this particular time, we're going to have this experience together. So does it matter if it's Julian or Gregorian? They're all the same. They were all introduced really by everybody. Yeah, some are connected, attached to the church. So of course, the dark had very much to do with that. But we all want, we all want a measure of time. We said this, even in the rest of the matrix, when we deal with the aliens from New Earth, they will want to use time. It doesn't matter that you tell them, Lorraine, listen, time is not real. They'd be like, Okay, sure, but Tuesday at five, we're still doing this, right? Because that's the way we want to do it, and that's perfectly okay. So does it mean that the new calendars based on the sun are better or worse, that they were introduced by the dark? Because that's the underlying idea, is that we used to measure time based on moon phases. The moon is good because the moon is feminine. The planet used to be ruled by matriarchal systems. They were much nicer, less violent. This is where it goes. This is the game we played here. They were tied to women and again, more peaceful and more flourishing than it has been since everything moved to the masculine. Again, the sun represents the masculine. So the idea is that we went from good to bad. The fact is that even the moon calendar was, again, is just an idea. And even the moon, we're already sad. It doesn't have to affect you. The moon does not have to affect anybody. You can believe in the moon affecting you or not. And if you don't believe in it, it's not going to affect you. But it's something fun that we do, don't we? A lot of people, especially women online, talk about moon faces. It's fascinating to us. We feel like we're, we're taking our power back. But notice that at the end of the day, we still want time. It doesn't matter how far you remove yourself from what you believe to be the current in vogue masculine system. Some based fake calendar that was superimposed or that replaced the old calendar because the old calendar was good and it was natural and it connected us to nature. And so the dark wanted to destroy that and put us on this fake calendar. All of them are fake. We like to believe that because it was attached to something we could see, you know, like moon faces, then it was more real or more good. Again, this idea of good. But it's not the case. So yeah, I mean, was it introduced? We all supported it. We all wanted it. So you could say it was introduced by the dark in the sense that Gregorian, again, just the name itself was tied to the church, to a pope. But it's not that it was more evil. When it comes to time, we all want some measure. It doesn't really matter how you measure. It's not going to change anything. Now, if you believe that it's going to change things for you, then of course it will. And if you decide that in order to detach yourself from the current narrative and system, you want to measure time by the moon faces, you're perfectly welcome to do that. And if it makes you happy, do that. But the fact is that there is no more value to one or the other, really, in that sense. They're both fake, so it doesn't really matter what you follow. And we don't mean to minimize this. It does have a value, okay? Again, in the entire matrix, we want to use time. Time is one of the greatest creations, the greatest ideas we come up with within the matrix. On other planets, they might also believe in measuring time around the sun. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. Lorraine, thank you. Okay, talking about this takedown in the, in the last session, you speculated that perhaps if we had prepared the body better, we could have had more success with more people moving on with their bodies, as opposed to leaving them behind. What did you mean by preparing the body better? Having essences aligned with certain types of energy practices or foods, perhaps? 
not allow certain toxic products to come into contact with the body? What did you mean? And just to give you context for this uh, question, uh, they have told us that basically, excuse me, I have a little woolly, my lip. <laughs> okay, so uh, they have told us that the second group of people that were going or that went with the aliens were picked up by the aliens. And they started moving with their bodies, but eventually they started right, uh, uh, running to snags where they had, this is my cat coming to visit. So it was not an earthquake, but close. <laughs> and uh, so they were, they ran into snags in the sense that they were having trouble adjusting the body, uh, even though, even though they have, you know, technology and all of that. And so the 25th was speculating that perhaps if we had prepared ourselves better, this wouldn't have happened. So let's read the answer from the 25th. Let me see if Tommy will allow me to read this right in front of the script. Okay, we go. <laughs> we're back. Me. Yeah, so the main thing that we've spent... <laughs> he really likes this part of the session, I guess. Tommy, please stop. <laughs> me. Yeah, so the main thing that we're speculating about, because again, we don't know. We would have to analyze all of this, analyze all the data, and we just don't want to do that right now. There's no point in doing it right now. But yes, perhaps we were referring to really at the root of the problem is not allow a lot of industries or even ideas to take root where it's normal, for example, for us to introduce toxins into our bodies. For example, pharmaceuticals are typical examples. But it could also be certain types of foods or certain types of radiation, et cetera. Now, we said a million times that the essence is sovereign. Doesn't matter what soup of toxicity you live in, in essence, the essence can be perfectly happy and healthy and strong. But in general, the reason we have introduced these things here is because we want to experience them. And so, of course, a lot of bodies have not done well with these. In general, we already have said an NPC, a body, does not do well with these things. An NPC does do well with different things, okay? We know, we already know, even from a 3D perspective, things that can be good for you and not good for you. Now, we said the essence can take anything and make it good or bad, but of course the essence, given the choice, given the opportunity to test something, might be okay with testing something toxic and getting some symptoms from it. Because again, to us, it's proof that the game is real. So therefore, it makes it more fun, even though from a 3D perspective, it's not fun to feel the effects of toxicity. So in that sense, we might have just not supported at an essence level. We might have not supported certain industries destroying our bodies, basically, or making it so appealing for us to test the fact that you get sick at a body level. And because of this, a lot of people have not been able to go on. So that is something that we would have had to look into and basically decide at a collective essence level to say, we're not gonna go this far. We're gonna draw, draw the line here because if we allow our bodies to go beyond a certain point, then we might not be able to move on. That's what we mean. Of course, the energy piece has everything to do with it. Everything has everything to do with it. I mean, how do we get here? How do people get sick here? We know it's a choice, but the essence of choice to experience sickness comes through the essence, then setting up something to where you can use a 3D excuse to say I'm sick. For example, a lot of essences have taken the, this thing, because it's an excuse to say I'm experiencing this. Now, it's the essence that's causing that, not the thing. The essence has chosen that, but the thing was the vehicle used. What if we had decided that we're not going to have vehicles like that available? You could not. We've already said on other planets, they don't have such low vibrational products available. They decided at a collective level, they weren't going to allow that. And they have darkness too, but they decided they're not going to explore this far, where they're actually going to hurt their bodies through the use of these things or have the opportunity to hurt themselves through the use of these things. Why did we let it happen here? We, we thought it was fun. We didn't think of it. And when we started, we didn't know we we're gonna take this so far. It's not like we started on day one and already knew there was gonna be a takedown. 
We had no idea this would impact the way we're going to move on. But now that we know, we might not have games like this anymore, just in case. Not have games where we allow this toxicity. Or the second we decide something is going to come down, which again, we hope that doesn't happen again, we're going to remove certain industries or certain means of vehicles of diseases or certain conditions, et cetera. It will not allow the body to move on. That's what we're thinking. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.